Hey guys, it's Dave here from Creative Path Films and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through our setup for a multi-camera cooking show. We recently completed a batch of cooking show episodes for a very good friend and client of ours, Angela from Fresh Food Friday. And the shoot involved a very cool multi-camera setup that I thought you all might enjoy learning about. And of course, if you enjoy cooking amazing meals, check out Angela's channel. I'll link it up above and down in the description. Seriously, she even catered our wedding and she is absolutely brilliant at what she does. All right, let's get into the setup. When we were planning this shoot, we knew that Ange likes to work very quickly and she's absolutely in her element when she's moving fast and in flow. So we wanted to avoid interruptions as much as possible. That's why we went for a multi-camera setup. In fact, if you look at any cooking show, there's a lot going on very, very quickly. So a multi-camera setup is an absolute must in order to capture all of those decadent details. For this setup, we had a total of six cameras in use and I'll walk you through them one by one. First, we had our wide shot, which was covering the entire kitchen and capturing all of the action. The second was a medium close up on Angela that was following her around as she was teaching and walking you through all the steps. The third shot was a close up of Angela's hands that was following what she was doing as well as covering the ingredients on the bench. The fourth camera was an overhead top down shot that captured the entire bench space. And the fifth camera was another overhead shot that was capturing the cooktop. Now ideally we would have had the cooktop incorporated into our other overhead shot, but we were impeded by a large range hood that was in the middle of the kitchen. So this camera was a last minute addition to capture the cooking process. Our sixth camera was set up away from the main action and it was set up on a small jib and used to capture all of our hero shots of the finished plated dishes as well as stills. We'll be covering this setup in an upcoming video, so make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Whilst I and our editor Chris were certainly happy to have so many angles to leverage, if you don't have the budget for a six camera setup, then you can achieve a very similar look with as few as three cameras. To do that, these would be the three angles that I would use. I would use the wide shot and then crop in and out to get your close up of the chef. I would have the close up shot on the hands and on the board, as well as a wide overhead shot that incorporates the cooktop. The trick here would be to shoot all of these angles in 4K or an even higher resolution so that you can crop in and out and isolate particular parts of the shot to give you those close ups in post. Provided, of course, that all your shots are in focus. All right, now let's walk through this setup in more detail. For both our wide shot and our hero shot on Angela, we had two Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4Ks shooting in 12 to one RAW. On the wide shot, we had a Sigma 18 to 35 mil art lens, and on the hero shot, we had the 50 to 100 mil art lens. Our third camera was a Panasonic GH5, again with a Metabones speed booster, and this time we had a Canon L-Series 70 to 200 image stabilized lens. We were shooting this camera in CineD at 4K 50 frames per second. That allowed us to get those nice buttery smooth slow motion shots for the right moments. For our main overhead shot, we had a Panasonic GH4 with a stock 14 to 42 mil lens to keep the weight down, and it was outputting its signal to an original Adama Shogun recorder at 10 bit 422 recording in ProRes. On day one, we had this overhead cam rigged onto a DJI RS2 so that we would have a remote control overhead rig. But I'm not actually gonna show you how we rigged it to our goalpost rig because even though it was pretty secure and we had all the safeties and extra support in place, I wasn't 100% happy with it and it still felt a little bit sketchy. And I've since changed the way that I would rig this for next time. On day two, one of our magic arms gave out and I couldn't rig it up the same way so we changed it up a little bit. This time I kept things super simple and I had the camera mounted to a small tripod head that was attached to a super visor clamp via a baby ball head adapter. This setup was rock solid and super secure, but unfortunately we lost the remote control ability that the RS2 gives you. The final stovetop shot was a last minute addition, so I had to improvise a little bit. For this camera, I took a lighting spigot and screwed it directly into the camera's cage. I then took a second spigot and added it to a super clamp, which was mounted on the overhead rig. 
Then I put the two together using a Manfrotto umbrella adapter. Whilst this may not have been ideal, it was a very light camera, so I was comfortable that it would be secure enough. Of course, I wasn't silly and I made sure that there were safety chains attached to both the cameras that were secured to the rig, just in case something were to give way. Which leads us nicely into the goalpost rig itself, which was the key to the entire setup. A goalpost rig is essentially a large crossbar, which is made out of speed rail or aluminium tubing that's suspended between two stands. We used two pieces of 5.5 foot speed rail that were connected together using a Kupo tube joiner. Using two pieces of speed rail of this length means that you can transport them in a regular sized vehicle, such as a small SUV. And that saves you the need for roof racks or a lighting van. The crossbar was secured using two baby couplers that were attached onto two C-stands. It should be noted, however, that C-stands have a safe working capacity of about 10 kilos each which means that there's 20 kilos between the two. By the time you take into account the weight of the speed rail and all the rigging, you're left with about 10 to 12 kilos that you can rig up safely. Because we were only using lightweight mirrorless cameras, I was comfortable using C-stands in this setup. However, if you wanted to have a larger span or you wanted to rig anything heavier, such as lighting or larger camera bodies, then I would definitely recommend that you should substitute your C-stands for combo stands and use big bend clamps that have a junior spigot. These steel stands are much stronger and they have a maximum payload of 30 to 40 kilograms each, depending on the model. But as I said, our rig was un under 10 kilos, so I was comfortable with this configuration. All right, that's it for our cameras. Now let's move on to lighting. Ange had a fairly light and airy space, so we went for a high key look. Our main key light was an Aperture 120D Mark II and was off to the side at 90 degrees using a large softbox. For fill lights, we had two of the new Aperture Amran 100Ds, both with 60 centimeter aperture lanterns. One was on the opposite side to the key and one was filling in from the front. For our backlight, we used two four foot LED light tubes. These ones were by Luminate slash Luxio and they were mounted up on top of the cupboards to give us some nice background separation. Well, that's basically it for this setup. My final note is for the soundies in the room and that is that induction cooktops can play absolute havoc with wireless microphones. So it's a good idea, if you can, to get in there and do a test before the day with the induction cooktop set to its maximum heat. And if you can't do this test, then I would definitely suggest having a shotgun microphone on set just in case. Well, there you have it guys. That's how we set up to shoot a multi-camera cooking show. And of course, don't forget to hit subscribe if you'd like to see the setup for how we got our epic looking hero shots. I'll put the link to that video at the end as well as down in the description once that video goes live. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, make sure to give it a thumbs up to let me know. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one.